Hello and welcome to The Telescope. Every week we'll bring you a fresh insight from the biggest car market in the world. Today's car is the Lincoln Co. 09 EMP. It's essentially a Volvo XC90 with 555 horsepower, 190 kilometers electric range, and all the modern toys and convenience you need in 2024. If you follow motorsport, then you might have heard the Lincoln Co. brand from the World Touring Car Cup. The Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing Team managed to win the important team's world title. The Lincoln Co. 09 is basically a Volvo XC90. If you need proof, check out these two cars in the 25% small front overlap crash test. The way they bounce off the walls are the same. The difference, apart from the styling and the design, which are obviously different, is mainly in the last three letters of the name, EMP. This car has the same four-cylinder transverse mounted Volvo sourced T5 engine that has 254 horsepower, but it also has two electric motors. Combined, you're looking at 555 horsepower, 190 kilometers rated CLTC pure electric range, and if you compare this to the XC90 T8, that's the hybrid version of the XC90, this has 100 more horsepower and nearly triple the amount of electric range at the cost of 150 kilos of extra weight. Talking about cost, this is the top of the range ultra version with every options ticked with the dual chamber air suspension. This in China is 45,000 euros or roughly 49,000 US dollar. That is less than half of the MSRP of the Volvo XC90 T8 here in China. Since this car is largely based on the Volvo XC90, I'll quickly go over the luxury and the comfort part of this review and mainly focus on that very interesting powertrain. This is a standard Lincoln Co, which means it's a halfway house between the traditional petrol powered cars and the Tesla, Neo, Zika and Expons. You have the big screens, modern infotainment, but the general layout is still familiar to the traditional drivers and you still have these physical controls. It has six seats, a lot of space, nice materials, dual chamber air suspension, electrically powered third row seats. It's still a very good school bus. It's a Volvo XC90, you get the idea. Now the powertrain. Firstly, I'm gonna compare this to the XC90 T8. This petrol engine is only the turbocharged version, so the T5, this is not supercharged. So it has about 60 horsepower less from the petrol engine. But it more than makes up for it in the electric department. This has a 100 kilowatts motor at the front axle and 150 kilowatts motor at the rear axle. So this car has 340 horsepower from the electric motors. The battery capacity is 40 kilowatt hours, which is two T8 batteries and then some. If this is the first telescope video you're watching, then your head is, has probably already exploded. Like how could it be this strong? But if you're familiar with Chinese cars, then you might argue this is not that different from the Li Auto Range Extender SUVs. Well, yes and no. This, in the drive mode selections, you can select it to be a range extender. That is, you're forcing the engine to charge the battery or provide current to the electric motor. And actually, in the city, like I am now doing low-speed driving, I encourage you to use this mode. By forcing the engine to convert motion into electricity, you will lose some efficiency, but you get to maintain the pure battery electric drivetrain smoothness, the response and the quietness. If you try to use the hybrid mode at urban conditions, that is you allow the engine to sometimes drive the wheel directly at low speed, you can feel the switch between the car switching from battery power to petrol power. Depending on where you're coming from, if you've only driven petrol powered cars and normal P2, that kind of hybrids, this switch is very smooth and you barely even notice it. But it is more noticeable, more pronounced than the Li Auto range extender SUVs. So in city centers, I encourage you to just drive this car as a battery electric vehicle or when you run out of battery power, drive it as a range extender. 
bud here on the highway is where this powertrain really shines. Most range extenders and single-speed DHTs and single-speed battery electric vehicles, their performance are good until 120 kph. Now, if you live in a country like China where the highway speed limit is exactly 120 kph, you might say that's enough. And it is enough for most people, but if you're a power driver, that is you appreciate high speed performance, you will love this powertrain. The higher you go, the bigger the advantage. By giving this car two additional gears, the petrol engine in this car really punches it at high speed. I would say in terms of pure straight line performance, this is very similar to the Aston Martin DBX V8, the 550 horsepower version. This has 555 horsepower total system output, and that's 550. So this is comparable to that, but this is only 45,000 euros. I know there are battery electric vehicles that accelerates faster than this car within 100 kph. This is 4.9 seconds to 100 kph but they cannot match this car's in-gear acceleration at high speed because those cars' single speed gear ratio is for the low speed acceleration and no matter how fast they are within 100 kph, their acceleration will taper off a lot at high speed. I love the performance and the versatility of this powertrain. If you're in urban city center or in a low speed traffic jam like we are now, you can drive this car as a battery electric vehicle within 100 90 kilometer CLTC range or as a range extender and the best thing is the performance doesn't taper off at high speed this 45,000 euro hybrid SUV the top speed is 239 kilometers an hour that's about 148 miles an hour this is the perfect high speed school bus for the German Autobahn you might be wondering, where is the catch? Well, this is a more complicated machine than those range extenders. This being a DHT and being a three-speed, so you could draw a question mark on the long-term reliability there. You could argue this three-speed DHT transmission has less gears than the eight-speed gearbox on the petrol-powered cars, but I would argue those gearbox have been in development for a long time and commercially deployed for a long time. So even though they are more complex, it's a proven quantity. Other than that, I really cannot think of another downside. I should point out this is not for everyone. If you're not a power user and you only see cars as a transfer box of goods and people from point A to point B, then you could totally argue this kind of performance is an overkill. But I suspect those kind of people won't be watching this video to this point. For all of you who are still watching, for people who appreciate performance and engineering excellence, this is a masterpiece. And unlike other masterpieces, this only costs 45,000 euros. That is all from the telescope today. If you enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.